somebody asked. Um, so we have the transformation notes. Okay, so the same note sheet we were working on. All right, so again, this is where we left off and we just did our, <clears throat> did our Kahoot on this. So where we're doing, you know, reflections and moving graphs up and down. And we had these rules up here where if you subtract externally, it reflects over the x-axis. And I shouldn't say subtract, I'm sorry. Multiply by a negative one externally, it reflects over the x-axis. And if you multiply it by a negative internally, it reflects over the y-axis. What we didn't touch on is this stuff here. And that is if you have a leading coefficient on the outside, if it is a large number, bigger than one, so if it's two or three or 10 or 50, that makes the graph more narrow. And if that is a fraction between zero and one, so if it's a half or one third, that makes the graph more wide. And I'm gonna show you why that happens. So let's scroll down here to uh, an example. So I wanna write the equation of this graph. Well, I wanna explain something first. Before today, not talking about stretches, we really focused on the vertex. And this is a parabola. It's moved to the left two, three, sorry, uh, reflected over the x-axis, and then up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so to the left three and up eight and a reflection. So normally, If I went to the left three and up eight, okay, in terms of just our left right reflections and transformations, that's what it would look like. There's a difference though in this graph, and that is that typically for our parent function of x squared. We start with our vertex and we go over one and up one and over one and up one. And so our parent function looks like that, where we go over one and up one from the vertex. This one is different. We went over one and down three. So what that is, is a coefficient. That means that the number in front of the function is a three. And in fact, it is a negative three. So in this case, to write this equation, all right, the first thing we would do with our x squared is we wanna move it to the left three. So that means we're gonna do x plus three. That's gonna move it to the left three. Then we have to reflect it over the x-axis. So I put a negative there. But notice I left a little space because I'm going to have to put a number in there. Because I want to make it more narrow. And so I have a negative three. The negative reflects it over the axis and the three makes it more narrow. And again, it makes it more narrow because instead of going, you know, over one and down one, we went over one and down three. And so it made the graph more narrow. Now I have to also do my vertical transformation. It's up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I would write plus eight, and that would be the equation of that function. Mr. O'Connor? Yeah. Would you square root the x plus three? Squared, yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I missed my squared. Thank you very much, you are correct. Otherwise, that's not the right parent function. Thank you, Sadiqa, perfect. All right, any other questions? Like in Schoology. I'm sorry? Like, can we get Schoology, um, these notes? Like, can we write, like, is there a sheet we download on Notability or? Uh, yes, there is. Just... This is okay. added to our, our note sheet that we've been working on. So that note sheet that was the transformations notes that you might probably already have in your Notability. Yeah. Okay, and so then this is, yeah, this is just below where we left off.
All right, so I'm going to give you guys uh, another example, but I'm going to just draw it myself over here. So I want to graph this. F of x is equal to negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 1. All right, so we're going to graph this function. So this, this problem, it kind of incorporates everything in this section. So I'm just going to put five notches in each direction on my graph. And so first thing we want to think of is what is the parent function? So the parent function is absolute value. All right, so I'm gonna be drawing and erasing a few things. So I'll leave that up to you in terms of how you wanna make your notes. If you wanna wait till the end, I'll tell you when the graph is done. Um, our parent function, our parent function looks like this. And in fact, for the parent function, sorry, I gotta try and get this right. But that V is made by from this bottom part, I go over one and up one to the right and over one and up one to the left. So those ones where we go over one and up one kind of gives me the width of the V shape. Like if I went, uh, if I went over one and up five in each direction, well, then that would make a much more narrow V shape, of course. So that's our parent function. We go over one and up one in both directions. But now we have to do some transformations. The first thing we follow the orders of operations. We have this minus three internally. So that's gonna move the graph to the right three. So I go one, two, three. All right, so that took care of that part. Now I'm gonna do the negative two. The negative flips it over the axis. So now, instead of from here, instead of going over one and up one, I would go over one and down one. But in fact, because it's a negative two, I go over one and down two, and over one and down two in both directions. So now that purple graph, not only was it reflected because of the minus sign, it's more narrow because of the two, because we went over one and down two. And then finally, we have the negative one on the end. That's going to move the graph down one. So now I have to take that purple graph, move it down one, and that purple graph is our final, whoops, is our final answer. So lots to that. Um, before I show you a different, uh, another one to look at, do you have any questions on that? All right, I'm actually gonna go to Delta Math in just a second um, and show you through Delta Math because it's, it's actually kind of nice where I can drag things and move them around. I think it's easy to visualize there. So I'm gonna get away from the notes here for just a second and go to Delta Math. Okay, so if we wanted to graph y equals four x squared, this is, it starts with our parent function. Our parent function is y equals x squared. And notice from the vertex, it goes over one and up one and over one and up one. So the question is, what does that four do to the graph? Well, the four is going to make it more narrow. So to do that, I'm gonna grab this blue point here. And instead of going over one and up one, I'm gonna go over one and grab that blue point and go up four. And notice that made the graph more narrow. So if I submit that answer, that looks good, okay? So it stretched it. If 
by a, a factor of four. All right, let's do another one. All right, so parent function is the square root of X. That's what's shown here. Now this one half is going to make the graph more wide. So instead of going over one and up one, we're gonna move the graph and go over one and up one half. Okay, so it kind of stretched it out that way. So I use that number in front. All right, let's do another one here. So two to the X, that exponential graph, that is our parent function. And now I have a three out in front. Now here you gotta be careful because remember that's gonna stretch it by a factor of three. Well, in the parent function, it doesn't go over one and up one. For this graph, it goes over one and up two. And so I'm multiplying by a factor of three. So instead of going up by two, I'm gonna go up six because two times three is six. So I'm looking to see it stretches it as a factor of three. So instead of going over one and up two, I wanna go over one and up six to check our graph. All right, so let me uh, do one with just a point. I, I guess, I'm sorry, I should have asked before I changed that. Are there any other questions? So like in this case, instead of going over one and up one, we go over one and up a half, okay? All right, we can also apply that idea to a single point. So just look at the wording here and it says quadratic function y equals f of x is plotted on the graph resulting in a parabola. The vertex, I'm sorry, the parabola is at negative six, negative three. What's gonna happen to the vertex if we multiply it by a negative internally and move it down two? So we have to think about this. If we're at negative six, negative three, so if you could visualize that's down in the third quadrant, we're at negative six, negative three. Multiplying internally is gonna reflect over the Y axis. So if I take negative six, negative three, which is in the third quadrant, I reflect it over the Y axis, I'll be in the fourth quadrant at positive six, negative three. And then if I move down two, I'll be at positive six, negative five. And so my answer would be at six, negative five. Okay, again, I take the six, negative three, and oh, it's not, reflect it over the y-axis. So then it would be at positive six, negative three, and then shift it down two, it would be at positive six, negative five. So we're having to do a little visualizing here. Let me do another one. So we have a function f of x is plotted. The vertex of this parabola is at negative six, six. So think about that, that's in the second quadrant. So if we do this negative internally, that's gonna reflect it over the y-axis again, and then move it down three. So if I'm at negative six, six, I reflect over the y-axis, I would be at positive six, six. And then if I move down three, I would be at positive six, three. Okay, so again, just to show you what that looks like, a parabola, we have our vertex at negative six, six. And so that negative sign is gonna flip it over the y-axis. So put it in the first quadrant like this. So now it's at positive six, six. And then the minus three is gonna move it down three. So now it is at positive six, three. All right, any questions on those doing a specific point? Could you do one more? Yeah, of course. Thank you. 
All right, so we have the quadratic uh, where the vertex is at negative four, six. So negative four, six is in the second quadrant. And we want to do this stuff to the function. We want to reflect it over the y-axis and move it down four. So if I take negative four, six and reflect it over the y-axis, maybe it would help just to walk through the solution. So I'm at negative four, six. If I reflect that over the y-axis, it's gonna be over here at positive four, six. Okay, looking like this. So I took negative four, six, reflected it here at positive four, six. So that took care of the reflection. Now I have to move it down four. So I'm taking this graph and moving it down one, two, three, four. And so I was at four, six. When I move it down four, I now would be at four, two. So our vertex is at four, two. All right, we okay? You guys want more? Any other questions? Do you think it would be smarter to like try to visualize this in your mind? Or like, do you think it would be a good idea? I think it'd be a I, really good I idea to- down, like to, a blank graph. Yeah, I think it'd be a really good idea to draw it out, at least to do the first couple of them. And then if you can, then to visualize it. Um, but, you know, just to draw it out, and you don't even have to draw the whole parabola, right? I mean, we're just talking about the vertex. So you can just start with the point, negative four, six, just reflect that point and just move the point downward. And so you don't even have to draw the entire parabola. All right, good questions. Anything else, guys?